All right, we're here with the second part of this uh, second gen Moto G. We're gonna go ahead and remove the screen off of this device. Uh, we're gonna use a suction cup, a couple playing cards, uh, possibly uh, this metal ISSMO tool, maybe some guitar picks. Uh, these Moto screens are notoriously hard to get out of their plastic frames without breaking them. Um, they use a really strong adhesive in them, not just double-sided adhesive like you'd see in a 3M tape. Um, it's almost like a glue uh, when it comes down to uh, how well these are put into their, their little plastic bezel. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and use our heat gun here and get it nice and warm around the edges. Just work our way around. Um, you want it warm to the touch, not necessarily hot enough to burn your fingers. Uh, but you want to get it nice and warm. Remember, this is the strong adhesive, so you want to get it warm enough to kind of loosen that a little bit and hopefully uh, get some sort of a play. We're going to try to use the suction cup here, see if we can't get it to separate away from uh, the mid-frame or the, the plastic bezel at all. I use a playing card. Now, the reason why I like to use the playing cards more than anything else is that they won't damage the plastic bezel uh, like a metal opening tool would. Uh, sometimes a guitar pick can give a little bit of push against it and cause it to almost separate a little bit. So we're just going to try to see if we can't sneak this playing card in here. It looks like it's just not going to give us the give we need. It's cooled down pretty quickly. Might have to apply some more heat here. If I can't find any sort of a place on the screen that's going to start to separate for us. It's not looking so. You can always try to push through the front facing camera hole. You can't get it to separate just a little bit. Just be careful not to have it shatter when you do that. This one is on here really, really, really strong. So we're going to go ahead and put more heat on it and see if we can't get uh, any sort of a separation started here. Just working our way back and forth. Not staying in one spot. We don't want to melt the plastic frame. Go ahead and try again. Now, this is pretty fractured too, so it's hard to get a good suction out of the suction cup on it. See right there, it popped off again. All these cracks and fractures on there. Looks like we're going to have to use our ISSMO tool. Now if you do use one of these, uh, you want to be fairly careful not to damage the plastic frame. So put the tip in pretty deep, maybe try to put the flat side down, and then pull back. Uh, get a larger surface area started when you start to pull the screen back. Uh, that will help you not damage the plastic frame. Then maybe we can stick our playing card in here. There we go. Got it started, so we're just going to move this up. And once you get started, it gets a little bit easier. Now, these can still be tricky when you're moving around. It's not much like a uh, other phones that are using the foam or the uh, rubberized double-sided adhesive. This is, like I was saying, a much more strong glue. Try to get it nice and warm here again. The other nice thing about playing cards versus guitar picks is when you heat it up, uh, they don't tend to melt and deform um, and get uh, bent as easy, but they're also not as strong when they're cool. Again, just trying to get that separation started here. These corners can be a little bit tricky, and the speaker grill here is actually put in um, to the mid-frame itself. It clips in, so you're going to want to put your a card over it instead of trying to go underneath it. And when you have a fracture like we do down here, you may have to go ahead and pull this up a little bit to get it started. One thing that you can do is use a bit of a sawing motion. Now, I'm not too concerned about this uh, display. It does function, um, but uh, looking at this, it looks like it has an open backlight, so we're not going to try to 
probably replace it at this point. Doing just a glass only, we'll end up doing a full display. It's pushing it over that speaker grill. Right, got some good separation going on there. Try to work our way behind here as well. Now when you dip your card in, you want to make sure you get all the way behind the backlight if you're looking to save the display. Well, you'll see there's a metal piece, uh, kind of like a, an aluminum looking or a stainless steel shiny piece. You want to get it all the way behind that on the back of the display. Alright, now we've got a pretty good amount of separation going here. We're going to go ahead and give it a little bit more heat in the area we're going to try to work into next. Go ahead and soften the adhesive up a little bit more. You do want to be careful of the ribbon cable. Don't want to damage that as you're removing the screen. Now if your screen is completely shattered or you're just using a brand new display, it's not that big of a deal. The main goal here would be to try to save the mid-frame. Uh, you don't want to break it or crack it. All right, so I'm going to try to work into this really shattered area here. And this is going to be some of the trickiest places because you can't use the next piece of glass or a larger portion pulling up. They're all separate little pieces that are adhered down. It can be a little bit harder to get them started. Uh, if you put your card near it and then try to use like a sawing motion with it, Kind of pulling it back. Sometimes you can get underneath it and start to pull it up. All right, there we go. Working a little bit better. We start our way down this opposite side here. It's a pretty small fragment here. It's still stuck down. So try to get underneath that. So I'd give it a little bit more heat. Up and down this side. All right. Got that started. Now we can work our way down. I'm just pulling it back kind of like a sawing motion. Sometimes you can use a card to lift up and hopefully that'll help separate as well. Alright, we've got some good separation happening now. Gotta work our way around this corner. These can be a little bit tricky. There's usually a good amount of adhesive in there. It's always where a phone wants to pull up a little bit. Now we'll work our way down. Try to do the same thing here. Sometimes it'll just go ahead and pull away for it from you. Now if your screen does have a large amount of shattering on it, you want to be careful not to uh, have that damage the screen behind if you're looking to save it. Alright. There we have it. The screen has been separated. Like I was saying, it does have an open backlight on it. So much like you'd see on an iPhone, it's not an AMOLED screen. Uh, so what that means, if you're trying to do a glass-only replacement, it'll be a lot trickier. You just kind of pull it back here and see that it's uh, an open backlight. It'd be a lot easier just to do a full screen replacement with these. Uh, they're not extremely expensive, and after the glue and the glass, it'd probably be about the same cost. Uh, maybe a little bit less, but I'm not sure it's necessarily worth the work. So we have our new display here. And what we're going to use is some double-sided adhesive 
go ahead and put this back on the frame. Now I went ahead and cleaned off any glue residue that was on there. I used a razor blade to do that um, out of a uh, razor kit, like a model razor kit. You got a flat blade and just kind of scrape it off. Uh, really anything will work as long as you can get it removed. You may pull up a little bit of plastic and that's fine. We're going to use a couple different sizes. This is actually VHB adhesive. That's a high heat adhesive. Uh, you can use 3M double sided adhesive. I just find this works just a little bit better. It's a little bit more tacky and holds down. So I'm going to be using, I think it's a one and a half millimeter and probably a three millimeter tape on this. We'll use this thinner piece on the top sides of the speaker grill here. Just using my spudger to help pull this down. Now when you cleaned off all of your glue off your mid frame here before you apply this new tape down, you want to make sure that it's nice and flat. You don't want any ridges protruding upwards. That'll make your screen want to pull off from the phone. You want to make sure that does not happen. So making sure it's as flat as possible will help deter that. Make sure tape doesn't uh, crumple up. So here's the thicker piece I was talking about. What I did is cut a little groove down here uh, to fit the corner of the phone. Now these corners are usually where the phone wants to pull up uh, off the device or really right in the smack dab the middle of the sides. So I just cut it to be like a little half circle to fit the angle of the phone. Do the same thing on the opposite side. There we go. Go ahead and start here at the top as well. Work our way down the opposite side here. This one's a little bit tricky. You want to make sure you don't cover up any holes that are protruding through the mid frame here. So, front facing camera is what we're dealing with here. We want to make sure we cut it short enough so it doesn't damage that. What we can do is use a razor and try to cut away the tape from the hole. It's really angled very well, so we're just going to go ahead and try cutting it again. We'll use a thinner piece of tape so we don't have to cut away as much. It still overlaps just a little bit here. And that could cause some issues with the front facing camera. So we're going to take a razor here and just kind of cut that tape away into a circle shape. Now it doesn't have to be exactly perfect, just enough where it's clear out the camera. Let's cut out the residual. I'm going to go ahead and put a piece of tape across the bottom. So I ended up using a, actually three different sizes of tape. I used the one and a half actually looked like I used some uh, five millimeters, that thicker tape, and then some three millimeter, which is what I'm using now. I keep saying thicker, but I mean to say is wider, wider tape. All right, so the top and bottom are looking pretty good. I'm going to try to fill in just a little bit of gap here. I would suggest putting on as much tape as you can to help hold the screen on. Just make sure it doesn't overlap on top of itself in any way.
work our way down the side here. Now this is actually a really important place. You want to make sure that this is butted all the way up next to the side that kind of pulls upwards of the um, bezel here. Then use your tool to make sure you push it down and it lays flat. You don't want anything overlapping into where the display is going to sit, the actual uh, kind of cutout uh, in the middle. You want it to all be up on the sides of the phone. But you can get some pressure backlight issues. making sure that it's nice and adhered to the device here. Make sure we cut it to fit. All right, so we got all of our tape down. The next step is to go ahead and start to peel it up. Uh, you can use uh, any sharp pointy object. Uh, you can use a razor blade or your spudge or anything that will help you pull it up. I would like to go through and just push down on anything that I think may want to pull up with the backing when I try to remove it. So I'm just going to push down on that just a little bit. It's easier to use a pin or something like a razor blade to help pull this up. Clean that hole up just a little bit more. Go ahead and start pulling all the backing off of this tape that we just put down. A little piece now is being tricky. There we go. Now, if you are looking for a new screen, I get uh, a lot of my stuff from uh, E-Trade Supply. There's a link down in the description that you can use to uh, find that display. It'll take you to their website, and then you can just search for the Motorola brand and then the Moto G 2nd Gen or the 2014 version. I do get a little kickback from them if you do order through them as well, uh, just so you know. They do offer uh, good stuff, and a lot of the stuff can be shipped out of the U.S., so there's not a lot of a wait time. Some of the stuff comes from China, so it takes a little bit. A lot of people say they don't want to buy anything from that was made in China for a display because it's going to be uh, bad quality. And really, 99% of parts come from China, so you just want to make sure you get a good, solid distributor with the return policy. And really, E-Trade Supply has a lot of good stuff. I haven't had a, uh, any issues with them so far. So we're getting pretty close. We've got to remove all the backing off of our tape here. So now we have our display. Here it is. Make sure if there's any backing on it that it's been removed. Put the ribbon cable through the correct hole. It's really easy to not mess this one up because you have those huge speaker grills. So make sure you line up those corners across the top first. Make sure everything's in line properly. Go ahead and press it down in here. Make sure the ribbon cables come all the way through. Just work your way around the phone, pressing on the corners, down the sides. Make sure you get a nice, good adherence there. If you want to watch the reassembly video, I'm going to throw that down in the description as well. If you have any questions, go ahead and throw them in the comments. If you liked the video or you found it helpful, hit the like button. I'd appreciate that. As always, I appreciate you watching the video.
and I hope to see you on the next screen or phone disassembly.